Heidi and welcome. Um, those of you that are just tuning into this channel, I welcome you and any platform that you'll be watching this video episodes from. Um, this is a prophetic word to Nigeria as regards the next elections, the 2023 elections. And in this video series, we want to just give you 14 signs to know God's preferred presidential candidate for the 2023 elections. Like I said, this is a word from the Lord and that I felt to deliver to his people. So I'll encourage you to spread the message, like, subscribe, share, let it go out so that people can know what God is saying and that we can receive direction from God. Once again, you're welcome and greetings to everyone watching me. In the last video, which was the first, I started by giving us a background um, about the characteristics, features, or the signs for us to be able to identify Nigeria's God's preferred candidate for Nigeria's 2020 election. I believe that the Word of God is our standard. I believe that we can trace everything that we are going through now and what is to come from God's Word. The Bible gives a storyline uh, of prophecy it relates not only to the past or to the future, but even to now. So we can find our bearing from the scriptures and know what God is saying to be able to get divine direction. Now, this word came to me on the 24th of February around noon while I was praying. The Lord spoke to me and asked me to write this down and released me um, some time later to share this and that's the reason why we are coming online to do this i started by giving you two signs uh, the figure that the bible gives us to look out for is the figure of king david and so it is expected that the next presidential election should produce a david that will come to help salvage the destiny of Nigeria's democracy and then to help build and consolidate on what the past leaders have done. This video, I want to say this as a disclaimer, uh, we are not paid to do this. Uh, we are not fronting any political party or we are not representing the voice of any candidate. We are just here to speak the mind of God. The Bible says he has hidden these things from the wise and reveal the two babes and God will do nothing except he reveals it to his servant the prophet so we looked at the life of David and we are picking these signs from him I gave us two signs the last video I told us that he will be a shepherd speaking about the next God's preferred candidate for the next election God's preferred presidential candidate like David will be a shepherd you know God picked David as a shepherd um, in the wilderness taking care of sheep to shepherd and to lead his people and the Bible says he led them by the integrity of his heart and by the skillfulness of his of his hands so we are looking at a spiritual and an intellectual leader he will be a shepherd meaning that this person that we are praying for to bring into power by our vote is someone who has been in leadership before now, if you are a Christian, you will understand what I mean when I say a shepherd. A shepherd is denoted with many names. For instance, a shepherd is an elder, an overseer, or even a pastor. So I guess this gives us a clue because what we want to do is by the help of God's wisdom, bring about clues that will help every Nigerian and every believer put the puzzle together and know who we are um, expecting to sit um, in the presidential seat come next year. I told us he's going to be a shepherd, one with music and a worshiper at heart. I also told us that he will be in the similitude, sorry, I told us he will be from the tribe of royalty and praise. 
And we know that David was from the tribe of royalty, which was Judah. Judah had the kingship amongst all the tribes of Israel. That means this is a tribe that understands regency, that understands rulership. I'm talking about a tribe in Nigeria, a major tribe. In fact, one of the three major tribes. And then also, Judah, was, Judah meant praise. So this will be a tribe that understands praise and obeisance to royalty. And we have many tribes in Nigeria, but you know what I'm talking about. There is this tribe from the southern part of the country that truly understands how to make obeisance to a king. And I want to give us three more signs in this video. Number three, this leader, this David we are expecting, will be from a lineage of kings. Not only will he be from a tribe of royalty, but he will be from a lineage of kings. So I don't know how you put it, possibly maybe from a state that has had past leaders in our nation, or from a zone that has had one or two people lead the country. So he's going to be from a lineage of kings. That means that kingship is in him, leadership is in him. And it will give us the sign that God has prepared him for the now. You know, there were many great leaders in this country, some in the past. And it looks to me like this leader has someone from where he comes from who has once been elected as a leader of this country. Now, like I said, these are just signs. I'm giving to us as God has shown me. Number four, sign number four, he will be in the similitude of the King David. I told you we are looking for a David, so this leader will be in the same similitude of David. Now let's look at David, uh, let's look at some. Um, characteristics from David to be able to understand who we are talking about. First of all, David was anointed king by a leader of Israel called Samuel. So possibly you are saying he may be endorsed by other past leaders. But more importantly, David, even when anointed as king, was raised and mentored under Saul, while Saul was in power. Because hardly will God bring the solution to a problem from outside the zone of that problem. God will always bring the solution of a problem from within the confines of the problem. So this is probably someone who is under or has been under the mentorship of a leader or a king like David was under Saul. I guess because God wanted David to see the strength and the weaknesses of Saul and consolidate on Saul's um, rule when he became king to be able to succeed him appropriately. So he will be in the similitude of David. There are other things I will say about that, but um, that will come in the subsequent signs that will be released. Number five, sign number five. He will be one who will fight all of Nigeria's battles. Just like David was a king that God raised to fight all of Israel's battles. David reigned for 40 years. And in these 40 years, he fought all the enemies of Israel. And God gave him victory over all. Such that when his son Solomon came into power after he was long dead and gone, Solomon didn't have to fight any war. The Bible says there was peace all through Solomon's reign. That means that this is a leader that will come in a time of national crisis and challenges. Not because the other leaders outrightly are bad. But you know, sometimes some things are not given. All that Saul could do was Saul was only able to harass the enemies of Israel. But he wasn't able to withstand and defeat them. David was the one anointed by God as the king that will bring victory to the battles. So this is a leader that will come to fight Nigeria's battles. What are the battles we are facing in Nigeria? Corruption is one of it. Corruption is a major, major opposition, major adversary 
in our country. It has eaten into the fabric of society, into the fabric of our nation. People no longer care about the integrity. People no longer care about doing the right thing. It looks like justice has lost its place on the streets of our nation. But I believe that God is raising our David. Now, David cannot do it alone. But David will be the arrowhead that God will bring to fight corruption. That means this leader will stand for justice, will uphold justice. Make no mistakes, as God has shown me. He will come into power and be accepted by anybody, maybe because he will look feeble. But make no mistakes. Beyond that feeble and calm look is the spirit of a warrior. And he will stand against corruption using the three arms of government to address it at every level. One of the battles we're dealing with, which is insecurity too. Insecurity is a major um, um, threat. Now, in the subsequent signs, I will tell you something about the tactics that this leader will use. And I want you to watch out because every of these things will be fulfilled concurrently. I will tell you of the tactics he will use as far as the military cycle is concerned so that we can watch out for it when it happens. Insecurity is one of the battles we are facing. Poverty and illiteracy. Poverty everywhere. Our economy rises but goes down much more than it rises. We have technocrats and everybody is doing their best in government. But I believe that there is something beyond that we are facing and that's why we have poverty the poverty ratio is high particularly in the north where i come from and illiteracy now i'll say something about illiteracy more illiteracy is one of the battles that nigeria has to fight you don't help a man by giving him food alone that's temporal help the real help you can give to a man is to get him educated and we need to understand that there's a difference between schooling and education there's a quote by um i want to read to you by albert einstein he spoke about education and here is what he said albert einstein said education is what remains after one has forgotten what one has learned in school education is what remains after one has forgotten what one has learned in school so we go to school to get educated but education is beyond schooling now if illiteracy must be addressed in our country because i believe one of the reasons why we have crisis revolt poverty is because the people are not empowered in the place where they need the most empowerment which is in their mind as it is said that rather than giving a man fish it is good to teach him how to fish we need to take education to the grassroots we need to get a lot of illiterate young children out of the street and get them educated to secure the future of our nation. And the David that God will raise will be one that will address this matter. And so we will see that he will bring about reform policies around the educational cycle. Maybe because he's interested in education or possibly because he may be from the educational cycle. Now, like I said, I'm just here to give you a sign. So he will come to address the stakeholders within uh, the educational sector of the nation, whether the teachers, whether the students. And we will see it by the reform policies he will set up. And that's the reason why in one of the signs I gave earlier, that he will be accepted by one tribe, just like David was accepted by one tribe, the tribe of Judah. The tribe that David was accepted for was known for praise. And the Bible says it's out of the mouth of children that God has perfected praise. That means that this lady I we're talking about is accepted by a younger generation. Maybe because he will address one of the needs and the concerns of that generation, which is illiteracy. So he will come to fight all of Nigerians battle he will do this by formulating intellectual policies that will address current global challenges and um, implement also the things that has been formulated you will see these two things he will bring intellectual policies that will address the challenges we are facing 
that cut across the globe. In fact, in such a way that his government will be admired by other governments. And he will also come to consolidate on policies that are, and reforms that have been made to see that they are executed to the latter. Now, I'll stop here in this video. Uh, please make sure you like, share, and subscribe from whatever platform. Let this message go very far. God is out to give us direction in this season. We need to have a model. We need to know who God is talking about. Like I said, we are not fronting for any political party or we are not the voice of any candidate. We are only here to give a blueprint so that God's people can be wise enough to decide. At the end of the day, your vote counts. But we need to have a picture of who God wants us to elect. Thank you very much and God bless you. I'll see you again.